Hi everybody, how are you guys doing today? It's good to be back again for another episode of the Expat Answer Man. Great to have everybody on board. You know, I want to start off today's program by talking about getting refunds in the Philippines. As pretty much anybody who would be reading this or watching the video would probably already know, it's almost impossible to get a refund in the Philippines, or at least it has been over the years. Uh, you know, whether you'd buy something and it was defective or something was absolutely wrong with it, you just couldn't get a refund. Now, a lot of places it'll be like, well, if you bought it and within seven days we'll exchange it for the exact same item or that sort of thing. But still, it just was not suitable. It wasn't right. You know, sometimes you bought something and it wasn't your fault and you were stuck with it. But, you know, it started out about uh, six years ago, I'd say, five to six years ago. Uh, during Christmas time, FEMA and I bought three cell phones that were all the same make and model. And uh, we really had high hopes for these cell phones. It was not a cheap model either. It was an expensive cell phone, all three of those, same model. And it turned out that none of the three worked. And it wasn't necessarily a defect. It was that the design of the phone was not good and it caused different things not to work. So it wasn't like we want to exchange it for another one that works because none of them worked. Uh, there was just something about the design that was flawed. And, you know, anybody who knows FEMA, you would know that FEMA is like a bulldog. I mean, you don't want to get on FEMA's wrong side because she will make things right no matter what. And, you know, I love FEMA very much. That's uh, one of the things I like about her is that she is diligent when it comes to what she thinks is right. And that's how she should be. A lot of Filipinos aren't like that. They're more demure. They're, they, they just give way to what they think is supposed to be. But not FEMA. So FEMA went to battle on these cell phones, and it took about a week or so for her, as I recall. But we got a refund on all three phones, which was incredible. I had never heard in my life of being able to get a refund in the Philippines, but she did it. Now, you know, I hadn't thought much about that, and I hadn't ever really had a need to get a refund on anything uh, until recently. Back in May, I had some blood tests done. Uh, many of you might know I've been doing some kind of radical things with my health, and I've really turned my health around, and I've reversed my diabetes. I have, uh, I've lost a lot of weight. Uh, as a matter of fact, just this past week, I hit a milestone where I'm down 200 pounds since my peak weight. I've got about 50 more pounds I want to lose, and uh, I'm going to get there. But anyway, I went in in May and had this certain blood test done, which is kind of a rare blood test. And they told me, they said, well, we, don't, uh, we have to send this off to have it done or whatever. And it's going to take about two months to get the results. And as I recall, they told me, uh, I think uh, July 23rd, I was supposed to get the results on that or sometime around there. Well, I forgot about it. And about the first week of August, they called me. They said, Mr. Martin, uh, yes, yes, this is Mr. Martin. Uh, you know, we, we never sent those blood tests in. And I never could really understand why they didn't send the tests in. But so obviously, if they hadn't sent the tests in, there were no results to be had either. So by this time, I was kind of fed up with it, and I really didn't need the test anymore because the results had already confirmed what I was hoping to find out through the blood tests. And this was a very expensive blood test. This one blood test only was more than $50. Now, you know, $50 for health care in the United States or Europe, whatever, that's probably like, oh, that's just cheap. A $50 blood test here is like the gold standard. I mean, it's like a, an ounce of gold here. You don't pay $50 for a single blood test. So I told him, I said, you know, I really don't want that test anymore. Uh, don't send it in. Okay, uh, can I come in and get a refund? 
And I just thought this was going to be a, a battle royale, you know. I didn't uh, know what to expect, but it wasn't going to be good, let's say. And the lady on the other end of the phone said, uh, well, just hold, let me go check on something. And she put me on hold, and within about two minutes, she came back on, and she said, Mr. Martin? I said, yes. And she said, uh, you can stop by any time and pick up your refund. And, I mean, I was just flabbergasted. I almost fell on the floor. It's unheard of especially with no resistance at all. And I was still kind of unsure whether it was really going to happen or not. Am I really going to get a refund? Or when I get down there, are they going to hassle me? So I happened to be going into that part of town the next day, and uh, I just said, I'm going to stop by and, and see about getting my refund. Walked in there, I handed them my receipt. That's one thing, if you're going to do any kind of business in the Philippines, keep your receipts for everything. You might have, so, have something come up five years later and they want to see your receipt. Make sure you have it. So anyway, I had my receipt, took it in there, handed them my receipt. The lady said, oh, you're Mr. Martin. Yes, I am. Okay, I'll be right back. A minute or so went by, she came back, she handed me, it was like 2,300 pesos. Uh, here's your money, thank you very much. And you know, I had done business there regularly. I always go to this one lab to get any kind of lab work done, any kind of uh, testing medically. I always have it done here because it's really the best medical lab in town. I'll give them a plug here. The name of the place here in Davao City is Central Lab. Central Lab, they're down in the same building with Green Windows Hotel. It's not far from Davao Doctors Hospital. As far as I'm concerned, there is no better medical lab in the Philippines, and I'm not just talking about refunds. These people do excellent work, they've got top-rate equipment, everything is uh, really good there. So if you're in Davao and you need medical tests, go down to Central Lab. But anyway, uh, and by the way, I'm not getting paid anything for that plug. That's just uh, out of my gratitude for the good work that they do. But anyway, you know, I feel like I'm starting to see a real liberalization when it comes to refunds in the Philippines. A little more customer service, a little less attitude, a little less, hey, we're in charge and you mean nothing. Just come back and spend money with us again. I'm not seeing that anymore. So, you know, it's a slow change, and uh, I can't say it's that way everywhere, but I will say I was very happy when this happened. So anyway, uh, let's get on with the show, and today I have a call asking about internet service in the Philippines. But first, let's have a message from one of my sponsors here. Flowers are special. Flowers mean love. If you give flowers to your girl, it shows romance and love. At Well Philippines, flowers are special to us too. We got our start selling nothing but flowers. Now we sell many other products, but flowers hold a special place in our heart. We get our flowers from some of the best flower farms in the Philippines, and they are very close to where we're located, so the flowers are always fresh. Our flowers come from Bukidnon province in a perfect climate for growing flowers. We are always here for you with high quality flowers, professionally arranged, and with a special touch that makes Wow Philippines the best source for flower delivery in the Philippines. Come and visit us today. We're looking forward to seeing you. We're always here to serve you. That's wowphilippines.com www.philippines.com We're here to help you. Yes, Bob. Good morning, and uh, thank you for having your forum on questions and answers for people that are American citizens and other citizens who travel to the Philippines. Uh, my question today is regarding uh, quality internet service. Um, my travels will take me to uh, the island of Luzon, uh, out to Pangasinan. And I've been doing research to try and find out what's the best and the most and the fastest internet service that's around. Uh, being from America, where we're used to extreme high speeds, such as 70 megabytes per second up and down, it seems like the only thing that's available uh, through uh, PDLT 
um, is a DSL uh, internet with speeds of maximum of 15 megabytes per second. Um, I'd like to know in your opinion, what is the best internet company that uh, you recommend and uh, one that would also give high speed and also quality of and dependable service? I'm looking for hardwired, uh, not Wi-Fi. I'll provide my own Wi-Fi once the internet is established and built into my house. And uh, I appreciate the uh, answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, hi there, Lanny. How are you doing today? You know, I have to admit, uh, when Lanny first sent me the voicemail, which was, I think, about a month ago, I replied to him via email with my answer to his question. That's what I generally do when I get these questions. And then later, I'll use the question audio on my Expat Answer Man video cast. And so I sent Lanny an email and I said, hey, Larry, this is, you know, I got his name wrong. So I want to apologize to Lanny. I already did that on a follow up email, but I just took a quick look and I thought it was Larry. So anyway, uh, Lanny, you're asking me about who's the best Internet provider in the Philippines and who uh, who you should get for your Internet provider. You don't want wireless. You want a wired connection. That's a very wise choice also. But, you know, I answered this exact same question on a podcast about two to three years ago. And by the way, I did send Lanny a, a link to the podcast so he could listen to that. But I'm going to cover it again for those that are watching. Uh, there's always new people on board. Some of the old people have gone on to, maybe they decided to move to Thailand or Mexico instead, and they're not watching me anymore. That's no problem. Uh, I'm not doing any videos about Thailand or Mexico. But, um, you know, the Internet in the Philippines, it varies from place to place. Uh, Lanny said he's going to be up in Luzon. I live in Mindanao. That's about as far from each other as you can get and still be in the Philippines. I live in Davao City, Mindanao. Now, if Lanny had called in and said, hey, I'm coming to Davao, who's the best internet provider? I'd give him the same answer. I want to know what neighborhood in Davao you're going to be in, and then I can have an idea who you should look into for internet. Because to be honest, if you're in one neighborhood and go over to the next neighborhood, it could be a totally different answer. And if I said, well, Globe is going to be the best. Well, maybe if you went to a different neighborhood, it's the worst. So I just can't answer the question. But what I would recommend, Lanny, and to others who have an interest in this, and this is a topic that I just see expats asking about online, on forums and everything all the time, or complaining about the internet provider they have. This is a question that uh, needs to be answered for those people. So my recommendation is, and what I have always done, guys, is if I'm going to be moving to a new neighborhood, the first thing I do is I go look at the house and I say, who uh, has internet here in your neighborhood? And they'll tell me such and such. It's not always right. And I pretty much know who provides internet in all the different neighborhoods, especially the good quality internet that I demand and that what I need to be able to operate my businesses. So I just ask just to see if they tell me something I'm not expecting. But uh, if I find a house that I like, I do not sign a lease on it, I don't buy it or whatever. My first step is that on most of these internet providers, I have contacts at these places and I can call up and say, hey, Sue, I'm thinking of renting a place over at Matina Playa subdivision. Uh, you have internet there. Yes, I do, uh, Mr. Martin. Okay, well, then I'll say, look, can I get somebody to just do a temporary installation so I can check it out? Now, I would say the average Joe won't be able to get that done because they're going to just say, no, we can't do that. But I have connections. These people know me. And so I can do that. Uh, maybe if you can't do that, maybe you can ask a neighbor to check out their Internet. And another thing is a lot of people will move here and they'll see the cheapest Internet they can get 
and they get the cheap one. They get the one that's, you know, $10 a month, and then they're upset that it's not fast. Well, what do you expect? You get what you pay for. Now, in my own case, I have two internet providers. I always have redundancy in my internet connection because I don't care how good of a provider you have, in the Philippines, you're gonna have outages. And right now, what I can do is, if one of those internets goes down, I just walk over to my routers, pull out my uh, cable from one and stick it in the other, and I'm back online. Yeah, occasionally, both will go out at the same time, but you know, I would say in the last five years, maybe that happened two or three times at the most. So that's what I do. I check out the internet before I make a commitment on where I'm going to live. And uh, once I've tried it out and I make sure that it works great, and I'm not talking about it just works okay, I only go if it's great internet. I sign the lease, I move in, I get at least two internet connections hooked up, and I go to town. I've got good internet. Like I told you guys, I have two providers right now. I have Sky Cable, which is the, the cable TV company, and I have 16 megabits per second service with them. I used to have 50 megabits, but the service was not good, and uh, I worked it out with them where we stepped down to the 16, and the 16 really outperforms the 50 megabits that I used to have, and I'm very happy, more or less, with the 16. The problem with Sky Cable that I have is four or five times a day, it'll go off. And usually it's only like five minutes, and that's a hassle for me because I do my business on the internet. Uh, but I can live with it if I have to. Occasionally, it, maybe I'll have a 30-minute outage, but uh, that's not as common as the five-minute outages. Now, my backup internet provider is Globe, Globe Broadband. Uh, I have to say I'm very happy with Globe, uh, except for one thing. I'll get into that in a minute. I have a 10 megabits per second connection with Globe, the truth is I've never seen higher than 8.6 before. I'm okay with that. The contracts say it's up to 10 megabits per second. Uh, you know, 8.6, that is up to 10. 10. That means anything less than 10. Uh, but uh, I'm happy with the service they give me. My only downside with Globe is I have a data cap. I can only download up to 100 gigabytes per month and I use the globe connection for both my TV which I use a Kodi box for which I've told you guys about before so I've got the Kodi box on the globe and I have my own PC on the globe all of the other people in the house use sky cable unless it goes out and then I allow them to switch to the globe so by doing that, limiting it to myself, that way I can limit the amount of bandwidth that's being used and try to stay under my cap. Globe also has a program they call the Volume Boost. And when I use the Volume Boost, let's say I know that I'm using up extra bandwidth this month, I can go online and I can apply for a Volume Boost. And for example, I can purchase an extra 200 gigabytes of data for only 299 pesos, that's six dollars. Now for the Globe connection, without a volume boost, I pay 1,299 a month, that's about 26 US dollars. The volume boost is 299 pesos, that's about another six dollars. So you figure 32 dollars a month, I've got 300 gigabytes of download at, uh, say between uh, 8.4 to 8.6 megabits per second, I'm very happy with that. Now on the Sky Cable, I have unlimited bandwidth at 16 megabits per second. Usually I get about 15 megabits per second. I am satisfied with that and it works well. Like I say, no data cap. That's very nice. Um, you know, that connection is, as I recall, it's 2999 per month, 
which is about $60. It might be a little less than that. But the fact that it has unlimited bandwidth is very much worthwhile to me. I've got a lot of people in the house, employees who are doing work for my businesses, and so it's important. Now the other thing on the Sky Cable is at that $2,999, that also includes my high definition, high definition cable TV. And I've got uh, TV, cable TV in two rooms in the house. And that's also covered under my internet plan. So I'm happy with that. But, you know, going back to Lanny, these are the recommendations I'd use, Lanny. If internet is important to you, and especially if you're doing business over the internet, I'd recommend that you get redundant coverage. Get once, uh, you know, at least two internet providers. And I'm not talking about two on the same company. Don't get the Globe DSL and the Globe uh, Wi-Fi. Don't do that because if Globe goes down, you're out of business. Maybe you get Globe and you get PLDT. If Sky Cable is available where you are, they work good for me. I've heard others complaining about them. But for me, it works fine. So, you know, check out the neighborhood before you make a commitment on the house that you're thinking of either purchasing or renting, Lanny. Lanny, I hope those tips help you out, and I hope, I hope they also help out other viewers. Um, there's a lot of expats that complain about Internet in the Philippines. To be honest, I always have good Internet because I'm very diligent about checking it out and making sure that it works before I sign up. One other thing I just thought of is I mentioned about Globe having a data cap. After you reach the cap on your data, you still have coverage, but it's at like 250 kilobits per second, so it's quite slow. And I hear other expats complaining that, oh, I'm down to 250 kbps, and uh, it was good last week, but now it's down. Well, that's because they reached their data cap. They either need to boost their volume or they need to switch to a different uh, signal, like maybe they've got Sky Broadband, like I do, and that's unlimited. Either way, make sure you pay attention to how much data you're using. Check out your neighborhood. Get redundant coverage. Those are my best tips for having good internet in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you enjoyed my video, give me a like right down below here on YouTube. Just click the thumbs up button. Please also subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's the Live in the Philippines channel with Mindanao Bob. And... Uh, I'm always happy to have new people on board. So join up, give me the thumbs up, and tune in again for another edition of the Expat Answer Man. Have a great day, everybody. Hi, I'm Bob Martin. My wife, Fema, and I started Well Philippines in the year 2000. I feel that we are the natural choice to take care of your gift deliveries in the Philippines. We understand your needs and expectations because we have been through the process similar to what you are doing. I am an American. Fema was born and raised in the Philippines, but she's now a dual citizen, United States and Philippines. We married in 1990. Fema lived in the United States for 10 years. We know the customer service expectations of foreigners. Most Philippine companies have no understanding of that. That is why we are the company that can meet your needs. Come and visit us today at Wow Philippines. Flowers, chocolates, whatever you want to send to that special someone, we are here to help you. WowPhilippines.com Visit us today.